Hey guys, so today we're going to talk a little bit about the object dropper and I have placed one here right behind me but of course you can also spawn it with something like the radial menu. Um, we have some tutorials about those so I'm not really going to cover them that much but here you can see I have this small object dropper here floating around. Let's get rid of these, just hide it back here. And yeah, with the object dropper, you have basically different categories you can to, uh, can display with images. For example, we have two categories, furniture and misc here. And if I select one, all of them will be displayed. I can scroll up and down here. I can go back there. And if I have a parent hierarchy, I can select the, um, yeah, the children here. So here we have shapes and decoration and I can switch between both of them. And of course, if you press on an item, it will appear here with a little animation and a little particle effect. And I can just go in there and grab it and it will grow to its original size. So let's try to grab it here. Of course, it's, it's a little bit big. So maybe let's, let's move it to the side here. And all of those are fully functional actors. So also if I grab this chair, I can snap it to the wall up there. And yeah, let's go in there and start with the actual tutorial. Okay, so first of all, I'm going to place this BP palette object. This is the one we have prepared for you. You can just drag and drop it in there. And a lot of the basics we already talked about in our uh, Pawn VR setup, Pawn desktop setup, or in our data asset tutorial, especially the data assets are really important for this one here. So just if you don't know what this is, um, yeah, you can go back and watch the tutorial about the data assets. So I'm not covering this here, but this one is really important. So the object dropper has this uh, component UI here and first of all I'm going to select a list and in this list I have a lot of different actors 11 in this case and I have added them all here. So the next thing would be to actually choose a category I want to display and this is really important because if the category of the items you have added on the top is not in there you're not able to actually spawn them. So just make sure that you're items um, are there and the category is, is also set to those covering those items. So now if I hit play, you can already see there is my one category called devices and I have my 11 actors and if I select one, I can spawn it. So this is already working. You can see the items are very small in this case and I actually don't want the palette to be grabbable in, in this case. So we're going to change this later on. So sorry for this, my microphone just broke and I need to use another one now. But as you can see, everything is already working fine. The components are spawning and they are fully interactable like they should be. So if we select our palette again, we have this component spawner and this is actually the place where the objects will be spawned. And we have two options. One is to use the Niagara particle system and the other one is for the size of the objects. And remember that the size will be calculated by the largest object in the group. So if you have very large objects and very small ones, the small ones maybe not the signs you really want. So just make sure your objects in one category should actually match their size. So let's turn off the grabbing here. So I'm not able to accidentally grab the palette all the time. And now you can see the objects are now bigger and much more easy to actually grab. The next thing we will talk about is the radial menu. So now the 
object dropper is not already in the map, but we will spawn it from the radial menu. And if we spawn it from the radial menu, the playing pawn, so the owner of the object spawner, needs this component UI radial menu. We have covered this in the pawn setup already, so I'm not talking too much about it here. But actually, this is the place where you define the objects. So right now, nothing is in here, as you can see. And if we go back and select our component UI palette, here we now have the same options to add our data asset list, our available objects, our categories. So the very same setup we already did, just with the little difference that the object will be spawned dynamically from a pawn and is not in the map already. So now here we have our bookmarks. I can spawn them. You can see the position is not perfect. We will cover this later on, but it's already working. So just go to the component spawner and pull this up a little bit. So now if I hit play, the objects will be nicely spawned at this new position. And you can use this uh, spawner for a lot of different things, actually, not only for this object dropper. So also for your own uh, logics, if you want to spawn something. So it's really worth taking a look at it. OK, so the last thing we want to cover here is, of course, the non-VR pawn. Because you also have the option to spawn it in the non-VR pawn. So first of all, I'm going to check out what pawn we are actually using in this map. So just open up the info file. And here we can see we use this non-VR demo pawn. And in there, we also have the component UI non-VR. And here you have, again, the very same setup. Of course, the object dropper works a little bit different for the non-VR pawn if you want to spawn it dynamically. If it is placed in the world, of course, you can just also use it with the non-VR pawn like we did in the first example. But if you want to spawn it at runtime like we will do now, you need to set up the non-VR pawn. So now we, here we have our categories. I can press on an object and it will be spawned in the world. So basically the very same approach. You already know everything you need to do here. Just keep in mind that the non-VR pawn is another pawn and you need to define what he can actually spawn. So just going to show you a little bit. Let's remove everything in here. Only add one category. So for example, the bookmarks. Make sure that the bookmarks are also in the available objects. So I'm going to get rid of all of them and just add the two bookmarks I actually want to spawn. And now I have a non-VR pawn that is only able to spawn the two bookmarks I want him to spawn. So you can see bookmarks and there are my two bookmarks. I can spawn them, I can grab them fully interactive. So those were the three different methods for the object dropper. You can see all of them use the same logic. Just remember to set them up accordingly. And thanks for watching. See you in the next tutorial.